Hello, McIntyre here. Mr. McIntyre, this is Lorna here. Yes, Lorna, what is it? I just got a call through from Glasgow Airport. The chairman landed from Frankfurt half an hour ago. But the board meeting's not till next month. Well, he's on his way to Glendarroch now. He wants to see you. The message said it was important. Dark with Langman, it always is. Now, listen, I'm on the other side of a vein, so I'll be quite a while. You better tell Mrs. Cunningham. I'll head back now, though, okay? Okay, Mr. McIntyre. There, now. Comfortable? Well... Now, don't worry. You'll be just fine. Could I have some more water, please? Oh, surely, surely. Well? What? Oh, she's fine. She was roaring her head off a minute ago. Well, she isn't now. Have you boiled the water? Ugh, I've done every damn thing I can think of. Where the hell is that district nurse? Oh, just to stay where you are. You're right. We could both have been killed. Now, you can turn that thing right round and take me up to Lachlan's Croft. And fast. Money? Hello, Maggie. Thanks, Jenny. Oh. I'm losing money driving that bus, Isabel. Losing hand over fist. You know, there was only about half a dozen passengers all the way from the Octane turn up. Oh, there was a stranger. Oh? A winter tourist, do you think, Maggie? No, I shouldn't think so. You look too hard up for a tourist. Took him all his time to find the 40 pence for the fare. 40 pence. Doesn't even pay for the water in my radiator. Oh, water's free, Miss Ferguson. Not when it comes from my well, it isn't. It cost me 35 pence a foot to board for that water. Oh, nothing's free, Jimmy. Nothing in this world. Perhaps he got off the bus by mistake. Maybe he's lost. <laughs> Must be. There's nothing for a stranger in Glendarroch at this time of year. I could do with a bit more sugar, Isabel. I gave you three spoons. Oh. Sugar's energy. You know, a village run by a syndicate of foreigners isn't natural. There's nothing here. Except maybe the Lady Laird. She's something of an attraction. <laughs> I think we've laughed at your Lady Laird joke long enough, Maggie. How's Fiona, by the way? She hasn't been in for a day or two. Oh, she's in good form. She's working on that car of hers. It's off the road just now. Oh, you should be giving her a hand. Oh, you can bet wherever Fiona Cunningham is, Jimmy Blair's not far away. Excuse me, I'm looking for a Mr. Alan McIntyre. The factor? Aye. It's his day for the crofts up by Ardvane. Oh, can you tell me when he'll be back? Well, he's usually back in his office by tea time. Oh, well, uh, can you tell me where the garage is? The garage? Oh, dear, it's not your lucky day, I'm afraid. The garage has been closed down for ages. Not enough business, you see, Mr. Uh... If you go out to the pier, go up the main road, turn left, and it's on your right. That's okay. Terrible colour he is. Terrible. That man's ill. <laughs> He's only in the village five minutes and you've got him at death's door. Gossip, Maggie, gossip. The spice of life. <laughs> well, I'll see you next time, Rod. Mm -hmm. Here, sugar's energy.
There ought to be a law against Maggie Ferguson. Be the nurse, no. Hello, oh, Mrs. Lachlan. Mr. Lachlan. Mr. McIntyre. Hello. How's Amy? Mother says she's fine. A drop. I wouldn't say no to a wee drop. The district nurse has just read me the riot act over my careless driving. I could use a wee drink. I thought she was looking a bit frosty. Aye. We almost had a head-on collision. Cheers. Women drivers. Ah. Miss Grant thinks you should have got Amy to the hospital. There wasn't time. It wasn't due for another couple of weeks yet. Ah, well, it's not my province to go, but I'm told by Miss Grant, who is very much the district nurse this morning. That you can never be sure when a first baby is going to come along. Ah, well, it certainly took us by surprise this morning. You feel a right idiot, don't you? <laughs> Waiting here, not able to do anything. How do you think your lambs will do this year? Oh, they'll do. But I could still use some more grazing on the Bernard Vane side. Ah, well, I'm afraid the forestry have that land tagged. To go. <sighs> Damn forestry. You'll not see sheep nor cattle for trees before they've done. Now, Dougal, you can go in for one minute. Then you're to take yourself out of the house for a while. We have work to do here, and we don't want you moping about and cluttering up the place. Do you hear me? Here now. How is she? Well, the baby's in a bad position. That bothers me. But Amy seems strong enough. I don't suppose there's anything I can do? Oh, yes, there is. You can whistle me up a doctor and a good obstetric unit from somewhere. Oh, well, I've got the radio phone, or I could drive to walk down. And forget your chairman, Herr Langman. Come all the way from Germany, especially to see you. Okay, I'm trying to help. Then tell your precious chairman that if the estate won't build decent roads up to these crofts, he could at least arrange for them to have telephones. Well, I phoned for Dr. Wallace now. Oh, it's too late. He's out in his rounds hours back. It's ridiculous. Delivering babies in croft bedrooms. It went out with leeches. Ah, well, it could just be that Dougal wants it that way, Kate. Then Dougal is out of date. Maybe you should have stayed in Glasgow, Kate. People have different ways up here. Oh, people are just people. You could have been assistant matron by now. Oh, great, eh? Six thousand a year, not a bedpan in sight. Ach, you're a romantic. You've opted out. Oh, really? You call this romantic? You're like all the rest. You think the Highlands are just picture postcards and purple heather. I seem to remember when you were on your back in the Glasgow Western. All you ever talked about was the hills and the heather. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't know you were coming up here then. Well, let me assure you, Alan, I didn't come to the Highlands for the scenery. Now then, Dougal, let's have some room. Uh, right, nurse, right. Uh, I'll be off then. Mm -hmm. You'll be all right, eh? Right then. I'll just be through next door. Well, off you go then. Now then, Amy, we have a fight in our hands, eh? I don't feel very good, nurse. Oh, nonsense. Big lass like you, you'll get on just fine. Well then, Dougal, give me a hand to get Miss Grant's car out of the ditch. Funny, isn't it? We've been hoping for a baby for all these years. But now that it's nearly here... Ah, we've all been through it, man. Just that you're a wee bit uh, long in the tooth for it to be the first day. <laughs> right enough. <laughs> we've been waiting a long time. Ah, uh, come on then. I've got to get back in Miss Grant's good books. Maybe her car sitting at the door will sweeten her up when all this is over. Dougal. Aye, right. For God's sake, man, will you? Come on!
told me the garage was closed. So you just walk into the place? Oh, I was just looking it over. Why? Oh, for my own good reasons. I see. Well, I would be obliged if you would leave my car alone. And if I want music while I work, I'll have music while I work. Now, you just listen now here. Now, listen. If you're going to jack a car up, make sure the other end is wedged and blocked. Especially if you're working under it. Because if anything happens, it'll fall on you, you'll get crushed. And with that radio blaring, nobody will hear you crying out. Good point. Common sense. My name's Fiona Cunningham. Is it? So what's yours? Calder. Ken Calder. You're not so interested in this place, are you? I mean, I know they're advertising for someone to take it over. Well, unless you're the local factor, I don't see that it's any of your business. <laughs> no. Maybe not. Just that I don't understand why anyone would want to saddle themselves with a white elephant. And a mucky one at that. This garage has never paid its way, you know. The whole place wants bulldozing out of the way. At least that's what my mother recommended. Why is it her? <laughs> She's sort of Lady Laird. Defunct now, of course, but she isn't the board of Glendarrick Estates. They own everything around here, the whole works. Oh, that's very impressive. Well, you need a new fan belt, and uh, I can see where the oil's leaking from. I can fix the oil leak, but I doubt if I could find a fan belt for this thing. Fix it? Is that an order or a request? I'd be very grateful if you'd fix it for me. Sure. But I don't know. No. Oh, hang on. Oh, Mrs. Cunningham. It's okay, Mrs. Archie. Mrs. Cunningham's here. Mm hmm. Thanks, anyway. I've been trying to find you. Mr. Langerman's on his way here. Good grief. Why? Oh, I don't know. I got a call from Glasgow Airport to say that he's just flown in and he's coming straight on here to Glendarroch. He wants to see Mr. McIntyre. Without a word of warning. Does Alan know? Yes, I got him on the car phone, but he's up by Ard Vane. It'll take him ages to get back. <sighs> right. I'll go up and change. Ring up to my flat as soon as Mr. Langerman arrives. I'll stall him until Alan gets here. Have the weekly returns and the yield reports ready. And call Alan again. Tell him to hurry. Our chairman makes me nervous. Started out to be such a nice day, didn't it? I don't get it. You obviously know exactly what you're doing. You know, good mechanics are in great demand nowadays. You could get a job anywhere. So why come to this dead end? Because that's what Glendarroch is, you know. Real dead end. You have to be at least 83 to get any sort of satisfaction out of this place. Well, there's screw a minute, will you? And there are hardly any cars. I think that's why the last place closed down. Dead loss. Well, someone's got to do the repairs. But look at the place. Who'd want it? You know, the old woman that drives the local bus even does her own repairs. I'm telling you, be wasting your time. You know, you're jumping to an awful lot of conclusions, young lady. You can't really be interested in this place. I mean, if I were to you, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. You can act your lucky stars, you're not me, do. Oh, Mr. Langerman. Is Mr. McIntyre in? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, he was up at the Crofts, but I phoned him and he should be on his way down. Then I will wait in his office. Perhaps you would tell Mrs. Cunningham that I'm here. But I expect you were about to warn her in any case, hmm? Well, I... Thank you, Miss Seaton.
what sort of a mood is he in? I can never tell with Mr. Lionel. Any news yet of Alan? He's not answering his radio phone. I keep trying. Can't be all that far away now, surely. Do I look all right? Great, Mrs. Cunningham. The ultimate weapon, Lorna. Mr. Langerman. Why didn't you give us more notice? Please call me Max. I ask you every time. What brings you to Glendarroch? Is that what I think it is? Kentucky Bourbon? No wonder I adore you. If you were not on the board, I would resign immediately as chairman. <laughs> and take your money with you. Oh, money is only money. It's the life's blood of Glendarroch just now. Our new factor is trying very hard to turn this estate into a viable proposition for the investors, but he needs a good cash flow. Ice? Please. You still haven't answered my question. I'm on my way to Kintail. Lord Strathmorris has invited me up for some shooting. So you made a detour all the way to Glendara? Especially to see you. You didn't come to see me. You came to see Alan McIntyre. Just an excuse. No wonder the Germans make such good businessmen. You never give anything away, do you? Only money. To lost causes. You were uh, out tonight, Jimmy? I might go over to Alistair's later on. Mm -hmm. And is uh, Fiona going with you? Am I being nosy? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Just remember who she is, Jimmy. Oh, here we go. So tell me, Mum, who is she? Now, you know fine what I mean. Look, Fiona's just a girl like any other girl in the village. Yes, except that this girl is Sir Logan Peddy's granddaughter. And what does it matter whose granddaughter she is? Oh, it matters. People will be saying you've got big ideas. And that's wrong. Oh, come on, Mum. Give us a break. It's the 1980s. Well, people can be very nasty. Do you think I'm daft? I know people talk in Glendarroch. They've nothing better to do. They talk about your father. They talk about me. I just don't want them starting anew. <laughs> Then don't you make something out of nothing and nobody else will, right? Not fit to be seen with Sir Logan Peddy's granddaughter. You should be delighted. I'm the dish of the village, for goodness oh. sake. <laughs> and that's the wrong price you've put on that. Cheeky devil. No, 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 no. I'm quite sure that I've got some Scottish blood in me deep down. I have a great sympathy with this place. Perhaps one of my forefathers was Scottish. Probably a robber chieftain. A robber chieftain? Is that how you see me? The real reason you're here is that business you brought up at the last board meeting, isn't it? Oh, come now, Elizabeth. Don't do it, Max. Do what? Clear the glen. How could I do that? The board outvoted me. This time. So? You still hold the financial power, and you want to turn this whole estate into a private pleasure ground for you and your business friends. Clearing the Highlands and the Glens, the English did that to us a long time ago. And you have never forgiven them for it. The people of Glendarroch would never stand for another clearance, Max. You'd never get them to leave. There are incentives. There's intimidation. Would I intimidate anyone? Yes, to get what you wanted. Oh. This is an agricultural estate. No man needs a hundred thousand acres just to shoot and fish over. I was thinking of a syndicate. You'd never get Alan McIntyre to agree to it. Wouldn't I? Oh, it's past five o'clock. McIntyre's late. Tell him to uh, telephone me at the Octon Hotel, would you? Oh, and perhaps you would have dinner with me tonight before I go to Kintail. Perhaps. Oh, and what you said about no man needing a hundred thousand acres for himself. I knew someone who did. Who? Sir Logan Peddy. Your father. Auf Wiedersehen, Elisabeth. I seem to be dining out tonight, Lorna. It's 
great. Well, that's the best I can do just now, though. I'll have another look at it tomorrow. It's just a toy, though. It gets me about. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Oh, no, it's on the house. I don't expect to get anything free, you know. <laughs> I like to pay my own way. Earning, are you? No, I get an allowance. Damn lucky. Yes, I suppose I am. Well, listen, don't forget about that fan belt. Here. At least we can share a can of beer, can't we? 